All right, so I just got off the phone with an old superintendent I used to work with, and I'm a promoter's business. He doesn't know I'm going to, and he didn't ask me to. I'm just going to do it and then let him know after I release this video. But his name is Jason Schroeder, and Jason Schroeder has Construction Elevated Podcast. And the, the old company I used to work for, the con commercial contractor, Jason was the general superintendent there. And Jason created a program. He was recruited into the company to create a program that we called uh, Builder Boot Camp. And so we had a superintendent boot camp, a field engineer boot camp, and they went through all the aspects for, for a week. I mean, these guys, I mean, immersive. I mean, they were in those things for 10 hours. And Jason would like Tony Robbins, have them jumping up and down, getting the energy going, getting the body moving back and flowing because they were sitting down for 10 hours a day, learning about all the aspects of how to be a good superintendent and run an efficient and lean job site. And Jason's boot camp literally transformed the way the company does things out in the field. And it gave our field workers who are sometimes stuck in their, their mindset and their old ways of doing things, they, it gave them a new perspective on how to treat people, how to run a job, how to do things efficiently. There's new things about lean construction that are different to people and not everyone knows it or wants to adapt to it. And Jason was an expert and Jason quit the company shortly after, or shortly, excuse me, about six months before I quit and he went off on his own and he's now a consultant for billion dollar commercial construction companies and he focuses on superintendents and his podcast has become a big success and his consulting business is growing and he wrote a book and that's doing well. And I'm just, it's, it's really cool to watch him do that because I'm attempting to create some, some useful information for individuals in the residential commercial or residential construction world on the same front. And so it's nice to see someone commit to it and do it like Jason has. And so I called Jason cause he's been a superintendent for 30 years. And I wanted to ask him what, uh, if, if he was in my shoes and he's never done residential construction. So he was hesitant to give me advice, but if you were in my shoes, Jason, what would you be doing right now today um, to run an efficient job site? And he thought about it for a while and he said, without knowing residential as much, I would focus on making sure that I am the guy that calls my trade partner the most. Make sure that I am the guy that calls the trade partner the most. Everybody is busy out there. Everyone is busy. And if you're dealing with an unorganized contractor, let's be honest, the majority of them are unorganized, then you're going to have a tough time getting this guy to remember that you called him to get on the job site. And it's nothing personal. People are busy. And so you got to make sure that you maintain a level of consistency when calling these guys and letting them know that you need them on the job site. I mean, I literally were backfilling yesterday and I called my siding guy and said, hey, just want to let you know we're going to be backfilling. Um, we're going to be framing in two weeks. I don't, need, I don't need this guy on the job site for four more months, but I'm keeping me in the forefront of his mind because four months from now is a long time. And if this individual by August or September, um, uh, you know, if I have, don't reach out till then, and then I call him in August or September, I say, hey man, I need you on the job site in a week or two. He's like, my schedule booked. Well, I told you, I mean, think how many jobs that guy has picked up between the time when we were backfilling and I told him I need him on the job and the time when I actually need him on the job. So you got to be, as another project manager I used to work with, you got to be pleasantly persistent, he would say. And if you're not pleasantly persistent and constantly knocking on that subcontractor's door, just nudging them. Hey, don't forget, I need you on the job site in a month. I need you on the job site in three weeks, two weeks, one week, tomorrow. They're going to forget and they're not going to mean to. It's just going to happen. And that's how you're going to delay your job. So if you're not staying in front of these people, and as Jason says, being the guy that calls them the most, then you're not doing everything you can in your power to maintain your schedule. So how do you maintain your schedule? You constantly call your contractors and update them on when you need them on the job. Why? Why? To build the house. When you need them on the job so that they can do their part to schedule their guys accordingly to be on the job on time when you need them and when they say they're going to do it. So kudos to Jason. He's out there, you know, teaching people how to build right. And I wish he was helping us out in the residential world, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking my, you know, resources of people that I met in the commercial world and I'm reaching out to them and I'm getting little pieces of advice that they would do in their 30 year career. And I'm hoping to transform it to you and in the residential world and see if it translates a little bit. So to, to maintain your schedule, make sure you knock on the door and make sure you are calling your trade partners more than any other general contractor out there. That's all I got for today. Have a good one, y'all.